gon' step up for me Make sure my fans stay cause my daughter gotta eat I know I ain't perfect Hello everyone and thank you for coming to my channel That channel is Deb Chanel's 48th World Yes, I wanna thank you for all my continued supporters My past supporters my current and future supporters. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I could not do this without you guys chiming in and keeping my channel alive and sharing my videos, letting other people know about me. I thank you all very, very much, okay? But we got to go into another must-see video. We're going to be recapping on several of the Real Housewives of Atlanta's franchise. <coughs> Excuse me. Basically, we're going to just be going over four uh, co-stars on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. We're going to be doing individual, um, what do you call it, commentary on four of them. Because four of them yesterday on the episode of uh, The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 12, episode four, they were cutting up. They were cutting up, and I couldn't cover all in one video. Time just did not permit me to do justice. Okay, if you hadn't caught my video on, uh, I'm going to say Sour Peaches, uh, pretty much uh, episode that aired on yesterday, the 24th of November, Eastern Standard Time Zone, 8 o'clock p.m. Yes, uh, again, season 12, episode 4. If you didn't catch it, please go to my archives and look at it, okay? It bothered my spirit the whole day. Because <laughs> Nene hurt me to my heart. This video is going to be dedicated strictly about Nene Leakes and how she has upset my whole aura of being in my 50s and have experienced a lot, can tell a lot, can keep you out of trouble from going down the same roads that I went through and had to discover how to navigate through the pitfalls of life and some things I had to learn from other people, which I was gracious to have learned, so I didn't fall amongst those pitfalls. But we over here at Dale Chanel's 40th World video station channel, YouTube channel, we had to dethrone Miss Nene Lees as the head BIC, head bitch in charge. We had her self-appointed title she gave herself. We had to dethrone her because her antics that she showed on last night was just not HBIC material. Now, one person who has always stood in her shit, still claimed herself as the head bitch in charge. And I think that's probably where Nene got it from was Tiffany Pollard. Y'all know her. New York. So, yeah, she's still doing her little thing out there. She's been, you know, still doing her thing out there on the YouTube streets. Uh, she's been over there at T.S. Madison showing out for the good. She's been on other platforms. So, we you know, we still know of her. And we know she's still standing in her own shit. Still recognizing, reclaiming as the original gangster of the HBIC person. And so, I understand I'm there for her. But, Nene, we had to take her off. We had to take her off. We're going to be in trouble. We're going to put her on there with Cynthia and Eva. And if we got to continue to add on, we will do so. Nene just showed her pure natural behind. It was naked yesterday. It was just naked. She was just mooning us and, and, and just destroying us in our spirit. The ones that really like to see Nene cut up and stand in her own stuff. I mean, Nene is a, a, a businesswoman. She's been out there many years, being an entrepreneur, had her own little design boutique shop before she even got on the platform of Real Housewives of Atlanta. So this woman was doing some things. Some things they say allegedly she was making some infractions out there, but we're not going to, you know, throw salt on stuff that's in our past. We're talking about what's currently going on in her future and what uh, prosperity she may have going forward. But yes, we know no, we, uh, no, no. Yeah, we should say no, no on Nene, okay? Uh, ban her for right now. Okay, she's still a star player in my eyes, but she's not HBIC material. We had to just take the card from her last night. Okay, but giving her her accolades, you know, she was up there with Donald Trump. You know, he's our president now, but she was on Celebrity Apprentice. She was cashing Trump checks, you know, calling herself a rich bitch and this, that, and the third. 
And I was there for, you know what I'm saying? Cause I like to see people do well and flaunt and toot their own horns, okay? We know she owns a couple of, uh, uh, work, not warehouses, um, store boutiques, I guess you can say, called Swag. You know, she's been doing well, profiting well off that entrepreneurship business venture. She, uh, have written a book, uh, telling you about her life, past, present, future. She's an author, uh, businesswoman, entre well, yeah, entrepreneur, philanthropist, uh, just a lot of things. And for her to act like, I don't know what kind of person she was yesterday, last night on that particular episode. And then she just coming back. I mean, that was her sec uh, second signature episode that we were bringing her back. The first one we got, you know, episode three was pretty much she was you know true to form and we were there for her over here at Dips Nails for the way it's where she was ruling she was self-appointed I was getting with her understood where she was coming from she had paid her dues and we must pay homage okay um because she is a seasoned person on the Real Housewives of Atlanta but the expectations she had on yesterday's show I'm like what who is this woman Harpo did she get called what the heck that they showing me on Nene. It hurt my spirit, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. It hurt my it hurt my spirit. Cause I'm like, I have appointed her to be Greg Leakes' wife right now. Yes, that's a title within itself, being someone's wife. Uh is an honor. Uh she's somebody's mother, she's somebody's sister, she's somebody's friend, but she's not the HBIC anymore. <laughs> no, not after last night episode it was a shame it was a shame we lost our dear beloved nene i don't know what happened to her spirit but we buried her last night okay now can she be resurrected i don't know i don't know what the future episodes hold for us in season 12 but no we got her on the bench she is not the star player over here for now and the reason why i say all of this is because how can you call yourself or HBIC, and you cannot take criticism for someone you deemed your friend, the one that rides for you, Marlo Hampton, you down with her for like four flat tires. And all thing Marlo came in the picture and said, Nene, baby girl, this friendship with you and Cynthia, y'all have had this friendship for X, Y, Z years. This is just a hot mess. Y'all need to get it together. I'm the voice of reason. Uh, I'm coming to you with olive branches. I'm going to talk to Cynthia, giving her an olive branch and say, y'all need to just squash this stuff. There's too much money to be, to be made to be acting here, out here acting like fools, okay? And she even said it. Honey, let's get this money. Let's curb that attitude. And I was there for it. I was like, God damn it. We need a Marlo Hampton at the HBIC because she's talking like she got some sense, okay? She's talking like she got some sense. Now, what she do off camera... That's another whole ordeal. We just looking for mindless drama, and we just there to get it. But I'm like, I want my hour back from Nene Leaves. I want my hour back because what she had me to sit and endure was a hot mess last night. She wanted to play the role as being pitied. She wanted to make like everybody's coming against her. She wasn't trying to listen to nobody. And I'm like, Nene, how can you be an HBIC and you don't want to have constructive criticism brought to your doorstep and you address it as it is? Welcome me in. Come and sit down, partake, uh, give the constructive criticism a seat at your table, uh, break bread with them, and, and, and let them read you the riot act. And then you go. As the HBIC, and you pick apart every little detail they try to throw at you, and you give logical reasoning behind why you feel such. That's what HBICs do every day, all day. And when we can't do it, pretty sure we don't raise somebody to uh, step in if we're feeling a little under the weather and we need somebody else. I mean, I train my daughter to be just like that. You know, you run your own thing. You have nothing but high esteem about yourself can't nobody give it to you but the lord can't nobody give you the joy the discernment uh 
the world ain't giving it to you. The world can't take it away. It's a God gift that he gives you. And nobody can't take you or make you uh, be seen or deemed like a fool if you're uh, working on those premises. You see what I'm saying? you got to think about yourself. you got to make sure you're good mentally, spiritually, and physically. That no woman, no man can tell you down on this earth, this plane of existence. you got to have that self a proclamation about yourself. You see what I'm saying? Can't nobody give it to you. Not in this world anyway. Not another human being. You have to be born with it or you have to somehow instill it in yourself. Troubles and times of horrific things can come at your doorstep, but it's how you deem and look at it to where it will make you or break you. That's your choice. You see what I'm saying? And Nene, you try to tell me constructive criticism found in logic that your so-called appointed friend, Marlo, down with you like four black ties, been down with you through the whole cancer scare with Greg, been down for Greg leaks and all this and third, and you gonna say, this woman made you feel so bad about yourself that you gonna haul, tear it out of a ritzy boat club because you couldn't accept what she was telling you as truth. Girl, I was so disappointed in you, Nene. I was just so disappointed in you. I mean, your own best friend tried to check you in private. Then she tried to come on a national platform and greet you with nothing but love. Now, this is Marlo Hampton I'm talking about. A complete sincerity that she really felt that you and Cynthia need to stop this nonsense. This back negativity going back and forth. Who was doing this? Who was doing that? Just, you know, throw each other an olive branch and squash this mess. It's too much other stuff we could get into with the rest of the housewives. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or anybody else that want to come for one of the housewives. That's too much action, too much other drama field we could be doing. But yet, you decided to be like a little brat running around there, a little child coming out your womanhood, coming out your age group. And all your experiences that you have definitely had and come across through your living, you just threw that to the wayside. Like it didn't mean anything. Like you had no cooth about yourself. Only thing you were doing like a spoiled child. Like you want something, or a cookie or something out of the candy dish. Your mama telling you uh, you can't have until after you brush your teeth or you eat your uh, vegetables or you've had your meal for the day. Then you can have your sweets. But you're like, I, I want it now, I want it now. And then if you don't get it, you break it down in that flow. You know, act like all types, of un all types of unruliness going on with the behavior. No, 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 no. That's not HBIC material. Then Marlo is trying to tell you, about the situation, the dinner she had with Cynthia and this, that, and third. You trying to figure out why your so-called friend is going behind your back talking to your so-called nemesis now. Now, she was your friend at first. And she actually brought you back on as a friend when you left for those two seasons. Okay? She brought you back in, surprising everybody that you were here. But yet, you're going to treat her like a dog. Okay? Lesser than a dog. Because some people treat their dogs like their family. The real good part of the best family. You know what I'm saying? They be rolling out the red carpet for their babies. Meaning their puppies, their dolls, their, you know, other family members. But you treated um, Marla Hampton like she was like gum under your shoe or something. Like how dare she try to tell you about your friend Cynthia. Like she don't know anything. Like you ain't even sitting and talked about Cynthia off camera or y'all haven't had off camera conversations and, and, and teas and crumpets and and, and uh eatings uh destinations out there where y'all partaking of a meal and y'all just casually discussing Cynthia and all that. You trying to tell me that never happened in it? You trying to tell me that never happened. I mean where's your empathy? Where's your sympathy? Where's your soul, my friend? Where is it all? Very disappointed in you. Very disappointed. So you trying to say you could talk about anybody else out there under the sun, but nobody can come back to you and show you your infringements, your infractions, your lawlessness. Oh, you, that's what you're saying, pretty much. Nene. That ain't HBIC material, baby. Then you want to know what was all said verbatim. 
that maybe Eva had said, that Cynthia had said, and then what Milo had said. <laughs> but yeah, you call yourself, you don't want to be bothered with what was said, but you still want to know the meat and potatoes and the other things that surrounding the meal of the conversation. Really, really, really. If that's what we do, we don't find out information. We are the information. You see what I'm saying? That's just like you bring all the information to me. Let me decide uh, how I want to spend it. But I thank you for bringing it to my attention. And thank you for throwing us both an olive branch. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to do it in my own time. It's what a HBIC would have said. Uh, I'm glad you feel like you want this relationship to work and you want everybody to come as one and we unite and we be a little happy family over here at the Bravo Enterprise uh, franchise. Okay, but you know what? I appreciate you saying that, yeah, this was an ABC conversation between you and Cynthia and you wish Marlo would see her way out. But see, you can't really say that either, Nene, because guess what, honey? You brought it on TV. You brought it on Front Street, and you've had many behind-the-scenes conversations with your friend Marlo and on-camera uh, uh, conversations with her about Cynthia. So, no, we, we can't go there either, Nene. It's like, let's stand in our shit. Let's, let's play the part that we are given, and let's come smelling out of it like a rose, baby. That's what a HBIC does, okay? which you did not display last night. And we're going to go into this apology that you feel you should not be given. They should be giving you. Who, who, in the, who in the right world, even the Queen of England have to apologize sometimes. You're not beyond reproach, Nene. That's not what HBIC, we love to get criticized. We love to be told we wrong sometimes, but we want proof. We want evidence of such, okay? that we are in violation of, and we certainly are not beyond apologizing to someone or something regarding our demeanor if it was expressed in a negative way, okay? Maybe it was just misconstrued, maybe it was misunderstood. There's always a chance for a HBIC to apologize, okay? We do apologize, even if we feel we don't need to apologize. It's called keeping the peace. It's called stand on your throne, okay? And letting everybody see you as an example of what a HBIC stands for, looks like, and how they behave. Behind the scenes, as well as in front of the scenes, Nene, that's what a HBIC do. We did not see that in you last night, girl. Okay, we're going to move on to our listening skills. Being an HBIC, we must listen to every party side okay everybody has a valid point everybody has a perspective everybody has an opinion let them speak okay that's hey is that the 13th amendment i think that's 13th amendment that's the first amendment freedom anyway y'all know where i'm going with it i'm on my tangent about nini at the time okay i can look that up later Put it in my video. But anyway, I know I have my fact checkers. I have my people who support me. Y'all tell me what the amendment is. I think it's 13. Man, it might be 14. I don't know. And I ain't got my daughter to come tell me because she's in her room sleep. Okay. But anyway, it's a family affair over here. One help one. One is, is, is lack of knowledge. We help each other. We provide that person with knowledge so we can progress on. You know, I don't know everything. I don't tend to say I know everything. But I know enough to get me through this lifetime. I can tell you that. And if I don't know, I have enough sense to inquire. <laughs> I have enough sense to inquire to people that I know have experienced it. Or I know they can help me because they're a little bit more knowledgeable. Okay? And they could be on a, a, a younger scale than me or they could be on an older scale. Wisdom is wisdom. Get it where you can. Okay? And apply it. That's what an HBIC does. So, Nene, your, your, your listening skills were not on point either. We can't always be talking. We can't always have the answers. We must listen. We react and we implement. You understand what I'm saying? We must listen first. Find all the logic. Deduce it into one reasoning type of logical thinking critical thinking 
That's what we need to do. But we have to listen first, Nene. You fell short on all of that last night on episode four. You was not trying to hear anything. All thing you was trying to listen to was those young men out there in a boat paddling. And you call yourselves hearing them cussing and this, that, and the third. And that ain't have nothing to do with the taping, nor the audience, nor the conversation that Marlo was trying to have with you, baby. It's like you were distracted in a horrific way. I mean, if we're going to be distracted, let it be educational. Let it be informative. Let it be where we can set the tone where I learned something today. Because we can learn something from anybody or any situation on a daily basis. That's what the HBIC does, Nene. You see what I'm saying, baby? That's what HBIC do. You failed in that as well. Then you call yourself storming out of the restaurant like you did not hear Marlo calling after you, making your friend look like a fool on TV when she was trying to bring you, uplift you, and have you look better as an HBIC, as a human being, and a pillar of the community, Nene. That's what an HBIC does, baby girl. But yet, once again, you fell very hard and very short of that pivotal type of opportunity that you missed in friendship as well as being the HBIC in charge. There was no reason for you to storm out on that luncheon that you and Marla were trying to partake of. You may didn't really care for the situation or the uh, topic of discussion, but you definitely could have lend a listening ear, uh, definitely see where Marla was trying to come from, from a place of uh, mischievousness or a place of real uh, thoughtfulness and, and, and wanting to keep a friendship intact that has longevity built into it. But you failed at that. You, you really made uh, Marlo look like a, uh, a dummy out there. You, you know, it's like Carpe Diem sees the moment type of situation. I don't think Marlo seized from you was the back of your behind going down that street and that was just not right not right at all Nene you left her looking foolish out there when she was trying to do the right thing T tonight or last night's episode uh, Marlo Hampton really was the HBIC in charge and she wasn't even proclaiming it she even told you on the sidebar honey get your money leave that check your attitude at the doorstep or something to that degree I'm like the guy Oh, girl, speak that wisdom, speak that truth and fruition because Nene Lee's ain't hearing you. That's why she would ever, forever right now, I don't say forever, but we're going to say for right now, the player card on the HBIC has been pulled, okay? It's up for anybody to grab at this point because, no, Nene, no, 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 no. <laughs> I can't stand idly by and have her say she's the HBIC when she ain't been acting like it, especially in past episodes. But I mean, it's coming. Maybe she's getting tired. Maybe she can't hold a total line anymore. And that's understandable. You know, we have to retire some HBICs, but they still go out with that title. But Nene, no, we're going to take the title from you over here, Deb Chanel's for this world, until you show yourself worthy once again. But y'all, that's all I had to say about Nene Leaks and how she pretty much, in my opinion, I'm very opinionated over here, uh, has shown herself to be unworthy of holding the title HBIC. And it's only because of what she just. Uh, destroyed and the confidence that I had in her on last night episode. Now she may do a, a, a 90 or a 180 degree turnaround and show me what HBIC material that I have laid out for you all to partake of on my format or what an HBIC does and how we conduct ourselves 365 days of the year. Okay. 24 hours a day. Okay. It, it gets no better than that. But y'all, that's all I had of this video recapping on last night episode of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. 
season 12, episode 4 on Miss Nene Leaks. Now, we're going to come back with Kenya Moore. That's a, a strictly video on how she acted last night and how we're going to have to talk and uh, find some reasoning in her behavior as well. But I hope y'all enjoyed this video. And y'all definitely continue to subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next video, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. I know I ain't perfect.